Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and as you can see we have a special guest tire, Mr. Chuck Foremsky. Chuck, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you tell everybody what fly are we going to be tying today? I call it the Bugskin Wiggler. Perfect. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit first about this, then we're going to watch Chuck tie this one. Well, first you need the material, and I'm, I'm going to use the uh, thick cut, which uh, is perfect for the worms. It's not super thin, and there's a lot of different colors, which you'll find out a little bit later, but I have two right here that I had loose, and I think I'm going to use the lighter color, and uh, it'll show up better on the camera, and I'm going to use a fluorescent orange thread. This is a 140, uh, how do you pronounce it, denier? Denier? Yeah, Denier. Denier. I, I want to put that French twist to it. Denier. <laughs> Denier. <laughs> uh, ultra thread. Uh, you know, you don't want to use a real thin thread because you want to have a little little bulk to the thread when you wrap it around the bug skin. So anyway, uh, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to... No, I'm not going to use the whole width. I'm going to go just... I don't want the worm to be super gigantic. Okay. Any tips on scissors to use to cut this? Yeah, I was going to mention that. I use serrated uh, serrated scissors usually. You know what, I'm just going to cut completely across it and then trim it down a little bit. I don't, you don't have to do this, but I always take take the end and you know, put a little, a little round end to it like you do, you know, for a worm tail. Yeah. Now, whenever you de you determine the width, I know you've tied a lot more of these than those. Well, are, are you looking at like the hook gap, or is it just kind of you, you basically have used your experience over the years? Yeah, to I'm going to cut a little bit off. That's a little long. I, you know, it depends on on what you're fishing for. I, I, I make it a little skinnier if I'm fishing for trout, if I'm fishing for smallmouth or bass, especially largemouth bass. This would be half the size. I'd make it this big and I'd probably make it in black and I make it, make it thicker. Now when I first started using this and the, the one day I was fishing for bass with it, uh, I don't know if I ever told you, but Bob Clauser was fishing there and he said, what the heck are you using? He loved it. He, he had never seen it and he wanted, he wanted it, he wanted to make it wider. He wanted to make a wider tail. He wanted it uh, a lot bigger. But anyway, that's, that's it. It's basically the, the shape. So what I'm going to use, and here's, here's a pack of hooks. There's a lot of different hooks that are available, but the, especially now with the, the uh, competition fishing, the jig hooks are so popular. This is called the Jig Nymph, and it's barbless. I like it barbless because I usually pinch the barb down and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and this is uh, Gamagatsu, and I think it comes in size 10, 11, 12, or not 10, 11, 10, 12, 14, and 16, and maybe 18. But I don't know if it comes in an 8. There is a jig hook that comes in the 8, and I don't know which one it is. Uh, Daiichi has jig hooks. Orvis has jig hooks. And uh, i got to throw out Honic, one of the sponsors. Yeah. I was just going to say, I couldn't think of it. Isn't that what Kevin has? Yes, exactly. Kevin Compton. I bought a bunch from him. And... Uh, you know, he, he gets them in bulk, so they're probably a little bit cheaper than he buy the package goods. Anyway, th this happened to be a 10 that I have, and I'm going to use a, a bright bead at the front. This is a fluorescent orange bead, and it's a 3.3 millimeter size, eighth of an inch. Okay. So I guess that's the diameter of the bead. Now, this is the new slotted bead, and the reason I'm, I'm using a bead on the jig hook is because I don't want to offend somebody <laughs> with a jig hook and say, oh, that's a, that's a, what are the guys, the bass guys, uh, jigging, what are the bass guys called? Jigging pig. Jigging pig. Jigging pig. Yeah. Jiggin pig. Yeah. So I was a little more sophisticated. I call it a jigging lamb. <laughs> so I have lamb skin instead of pig skin. I'm not using a pig. But when you put this on, you have to make sure you put it in the round hole not the hole that has the slits. So I just, wait a minute, I'm getting it. 
Okay. And it, it rolls around, and there it is. You, you just, you just slide, slide the slit so it goes up into the eye of the hook. I think you can see that. Yeah, we can. You can lower it just a little bit. What's nice about these, these slotted beads on these jig hooks, they typically ride hook point up. Now, yeah. Not all the time, but right. the majority of it. So you're less likely to snag. It's going to be hooks. like this. Exactly. The only thing... I mean, if you're this particular, like I am, and you're ridiculously particular, and when you move it around, you'll get that little open slot yeah. on the bottom. Yep. And I don't stuff it with the bug skin because I go right up to it, and I'm not going to put a little dubbing in there. If the trout sees a 1 32nd of an inch open hole, so I'm not going to eat that. That jig has a nick in it. No. Not jig, bead, I'm sorry. So then, then what you want to do is you want to measure it, and you want to have the bug skin going up to the edge, so you want to move it back about a half an inch where you're going to put a hole. And, and you hear what I'm saying, you're going to put a hole in it. You're not going to run the hook through. Because no matter how sharp the hook point is, and even if it's barbless, it's hard to poke it through the leather. So what I do is I take my bodkin and I just measure an area that I'm going to poke it through and I put the, put the needle through. You see it? Sure. I, I'm using a chair with a hard leg here, but when I tie in my tying room, I have a soft arm on my chair. Okay. And my wife doesn't know it, but I take it and I jab it into the arm, <laughs> and it goes right through the leather. The same thing could happen if you have a piece of foam, so you can push yeah, it right perfect. through. Kind of like those foam wing cutters. Yeah, but yeah. you want to make sure, you, and go back and forth like three or four times, and I think you'll be able to, can you see that hole now? Yeah, we can see it. Just so You want to open it up enough. To yeah, just it enough. And make sure you poke it through the suede part, because that's the way, I'm, I, I don't know why, I just want I want the finished leather on the top for okay. some reason. Okay. I want to look at it when you I rub it. You still want it aesthetically pleasing. And then you, you put your finger on the bottom and you can feel the point when you go through. And then you know you're where the hole is. So there it is. Put it on there and we're going to get it in the vise and finish off this fly. Okay, we are in the vise. What next? Well, first, uh, you see that I have the hook. Inverted, okay. Because of course it's a jig hook, and I, I think I cut this a little bit long, which is fine because I'll show you when you get to the front how you can shorten it. But you know what? You can't stretch it and make it longer. Mm -hmm. So you could always, always uh, have a better chance of having it the right size when you go a little longer, okay? Because you can't stretch it. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to slide it back. Yeah, almost where the, where the hook starts to bend, and I just want to get my thread on there. I'm going to just wrap it. Did you notice that when I did, I used a razor. I started yeah. using a razor blade instead of... I still use the scissors, but I like to use a razor yeah. blade for some reason. Okay, I just put the thread on the shank. Now I'm going to start the first wrap. I, as you see what I'm doing is I'm folding the bug skin over. You're like pinching yeah, it over. Pinching it down, making it round to go around the hook. And so then I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to go right. I'm back a little bit behind the point because this point is a little longer than most uh, hooks, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a little longer because that jig hook that you showed me had a little shorter. Yeah. And so I just two wraps on it. Then I'm going to go over it. And I'm going to, I'm not going to tighten it towards you, but I'm going to tighten it down like this because I don't want the bug skin to spin around the hook. I'm going to do like five or six wraps because the first one like that, I want it to be nice and full. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can continue on like this if you want, but I think I did something like this before. Maybe it was on that TurboTail video, but I'm particular. I like to see the segments without the thread connecting them. Yeah. So I lift it up like this, okay. and then I go in front and do like two or three wraps and go in the front. And then now I'm at the place where I'll put that next segment on. And see, I'm, you can't see it on my side, but I am I'm getting the thread over the bug skin and making sure it doesn't get the edge and flip it out. Turn. I'm pushing it down with my hand. This is the only technical thing. There's nothing difficult about this fly. The only way you can mess it up is you flip the bug skin over. 
And you notice how long this is now. I could tell I made it really long so I could show you how to cut it off. Yeah, you can, you can tell you're definitely being particular in, in the ribbing and making sure that I guarantee there's going to be some people out there that are going to tie these and they're just going to run, you know, thread straight up the shank and tie it <laughs> off and not worry about it. But that's to each their own. Well, it depends on, you know, sometimes if you're using the size hook that I'm using, you can get four segments. Four four wraps and three actual bodies, segment bodies. But sometimes if the hook is a 14 and you're doing a skinny worm, you might only get two. It, you know, it depends on how much you have for the shank. Okay. okay, so now I'm at the point where I'm going to trim this off where it's right behind uh, the bead. I'm going to pull it up. I want to cut it off and see. See, I'm going to tie it up. I'll take a little bit more off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish it off with this last wrap, and I'm going to put it just right behind it. And it's going to almost make kind of a little collar over the bead. I kind of like leaving a little bit over so it finishes. And we were talking, maybe I maybe I covered it. Ah, it's still there. Oh, <laughs> a little, there a, gap. a little gap. gap. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to do about five or six wraps here and finish it off and then all I do is uh, I don't want to pull it real hard and spin the leather around the hook because you don't want to do that I'm going to put a half a hitch on and then I'm going to just finish it off once again whoop, God and that's, and that's it and that's there's not much to it. No, there's not much at all. Take now this out. might be uh, half an inch long. I might trim, trim it off a little bit, but as soon as the suede gets wet, you got the finished look here. And you, and this, you see how nice the segments are, oh, yeah, how it bubbles? Absolutely. Uh, anyway, we'll try it in the water and I'll show you what it looks Let's like. Let's do that next. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we are now playing around with these things. Chuck, you want to tell us just a little bit more about what we're seeing? Yeah, I uh, I spilled the Tim's seven and seven out, and I got his glass and filled it with water. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the fly that you see, that the light colored one, is the one we just tied. Uh, and then I had another one on black on black bug skin on another stick that I had. And uh, of course, that has a jig on it. That's a micro jig. Yeah. So uh, if you feel offended, just put the bead on, like I was mentioning before. See, I, but I they're both wonder, bouncing around really good. Well, I even wonder if some of the the viewers of my YouTube channel know what jigs are, like the original. You know what? Because I, there's so I, many fly tires now, they're just used to tying on jig hooks with a. I don't see that bead. many. These jigs are not that common, and no. the only. Uh, I think the only one that has that specific jig was Wopsy. I don't think Bill Keogh has it at, at this moment. He's probably going to get it, but he has every bead that's imaginable. Got it. When you put it on the jig hook, it's the same thing. Yeah. And, and of course, the the jig uh, this jig head is, is not painted. It's lead. Okay. And the other ones I have, I actually painted them red and pink. And But that's another step if you want to waste your time painting them and then you bounce them off the rocks or the streams and at the end of the day they're all chipped up anyway so it doesn't well i remember tying next matter. to you at the fly tires reunion at seven springs and i think you were jigging these up and i'm pretty sure every time i had a nice crowd at my table chuck would start jigging i would just <laughs> lose everybody because it's kind of tough to ignore well, yeah. when you see this they're really cool i know in high school i used to go to the sportsman show in harrisburg all the time and there was that guy there with the great big tub, yes. and he'd throw his musky yes. plug in, and it would wiggle through the tub, <laughs> and he'd sell them like crazy. So oh that wiggling, it, it, it attracts the customer along with the oh, fish. I love it. So, well, you, you know, because of these are weighted to head, they'll sink straight down. Yeah, exactly. But you can see And they'll be good for carp because, oh. you know what I wanted to use them for, and I've never, I haven't gone for a few years. I'd like to go and fish for bonefish with it because there's so many saltwater yeah, worms absolutely. that dig right in the sand. And look, you see that, See how it would stick up in the air mm -hmm. and the jig would go right in the sand? Because you know when you look for, when the guys look for bonefish uh, and, and they go over an area and, and they slow down, you wonder why they're slowing down. There's a hundred holes in the sand where the school had been yesterday. Yeah. And he knows they're going to come back because that was a productive that was feeding, feeding area. Well, I mean, I'm looking at this right now. and 
I'm more into trout. So you, I, I'm thinking, oh, this would be a great trout fly. I guarantee there's largemouth bass out, oh, bass out there saying this absolutely. is going to be for largemouth. And there's going to be a saltwater crowd. And there's that, that whole fly fishing for carp right now. It's just been gaining so much popularity. You can see this is one of those flies that basically. It's for everything. Yeah, you, everything eats worms. And, and they'll, they'll move differently if you're fishing uh, straight out with your leader because I'm going up and down. I'm jigging right. them up and down. But when you. When you put them sideways in a current and the current moves it, you can almost hold it in the current and it'll right. go up and down like that. You know, it'll just shake and shimmy. Oh, and you don't have to fish an indicator because when the fish hit these, they pull it right out of your hand. I, like that. I mean, it's wham, bam. I like that. They jerk your fly line right out of your hand. Well, so anyway. Let, let's do this. Let me, let me pick your brain a little bit more about these. Let's change the camera angle a bit. And okay. uh, we'll have a little discussion about All this right. stuff next, okay? Okay. All right, cool. So you just saw Chuck tie the Bugskin Wiggler. Easy, awesome fly. We're going to talk a little bit about it in just a second. But I wanted to share with you, you may have noticed that there's been a little location change. When we first did the introduction for this video, we were sitting outside. We're at Seven Springs. We're at the Sporting Clays Lodge. And you probably learned about this whenever we watched Chuck tie one of his former flies, the... Turbo tail. You got it. We tied the turbo tail. Just a really great video. We've got a lot of great comments over that um, since we've recorded that one. But we wanted to come back here and record some more videos. And this is one. But we got out there. We just started to do the introduction. And then I was pretty sure that someone's trying to chase Chuck down because we just heard shotgun blasts all <laughs> around us from the sporting clays. Oh, <laughs> enemies are out. Uh, they're, 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 they, they made it. So we found a private room to, to kind of stay away from them for a little while. So if this recording suddenly stops... They got us. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about the, the Bugskin Wiggler. Can you first just tell us a little about, bit about it and why did you decide to share it with us now? Well, they've been around a long time. I think the original ones were designed, I guess, on the San Juan because they call it the San Juan Worm. You got it. And basically what it is, I call it an English bait hook. It has the curl to it. Yeah. I don't know if that's what they call it or not. I think Mustad does it. I'm not sure. But all it was was a copper wire wrapped around the hook. Okay. I think it worked for a couple of reasons. First, it looked like the worm. Then it sank good because it had to wait. Yeah, it's good. And it had the flash, So and it had the curl to it. But that was, that was the original one. It was so simple. And then ever since then, other people have been trying different things. They use chenille. Uh, of course, the reason I'm doing it is because I use buckskin. You and I've been using it. Well, when I first when I first bought the buckskin from the guys from New Zealand, I used New Zealand lambskin. I went there and visited their factory, and I, that was when I was 50 years old. That was my gift from my wife. You can go to New Zealand. I'm not giving you any money. I'm just giving you permission. I left the day after Thanksgiving. I came back the day before Christmas. Oh, gosh. So I didn't miss any holidays. I was just gone every day. Between. Every day between those two. And I went to visit these guys because they were fly fishermen. Okay. And I originally met them the year before in New York because I visited the trade shows because, you know, I had the two stores at Seven Springs and they had a leather trade show. And I met these guys that had this beautiful lambskin. And they invited me to visit their plant if I ever went to New Zealand. Okay. So I went there. And they came out in their wet, white coats, you know. <laughs> they loved me because I was the only guy that tied flies out of their material. Sure. And most of their leather went to Korea okay. for coats and gloves. But anyway, that's how I first started. And that was... 25 years ago because I'm 70 I'm Jeez. 75 no, believe it. trust me you would never I guess that this guy fishes more than most people so I know when I was 50 I had to be tying that fly so Jeez. it's been around a long time Here, here's a pink one okay. you can feel how very. nice and thick that is it's very it. very smooth the, the one thing I want to mention I know probably based on the popularity of the squirmy wormy then that's I, I guarantee a lot of you if you haven't fished the squirmy wormy fish it it's a great fly it works really well one of the downsides is that the material just tears really easily and there's been some ways that you can kind of combat that but it's still not good for that many fish versus the bug skin i know this is going to sound like an advertisement for bug skin now it's going to be more resistant than the squirmy wormy so i'm not we're not telling you stop fishing your sam one stop well, fishing squirmies because this is thicker now if this was the thin bug skin like everything else it might tear 
But uh, in a, it's got to take a lot of beating compared yeah. to the rubber. I would think the fin is more likely to foul around the hook. Yeah. And, and that's but probably thickness, what's going to happen. When, when, when you look at the finished worm, which you, you've seen me tie, yeah. you'll see the nice little uh, segmentations that the threads make. Now, when I first got a squirmy wormy, and I did tie one, I admit. <laughs> one. <laughs> I put, the, put it on a hook and I wrapped it and it just cut it right. Just after, no, <laughs> it, they're tricky ones to tie. They're oh. really tricky. And, it, and then I put another one on and it rolled around the hook. I said, this isn't working for me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm... Because I'm so used to the leather staying yeah. on real nice. And what I'm hearing is he never watched my video to learn how to tie him. That's, <laughs> right. that's what I'm hearing. So we're, we're gonna, I'm going to show him that after there's this. there's a bead I think you put on. Yeah. And then yeah. A lot of choices for worms. A lot of options. A lot you of options. You know how I first figured out that a worm had to work? Back in the early days when the cavemen used to sit around the rivers and eat, eat dinosaur chops and sure. things and whatever. And they'd get a piece of skin stuck in their teeth and they'd throw it in the water and the, and the fish would come up and grab it right away. And I think that was the first sin on earth. <laughs> and it's no different. I didn't steal their patterns. I don't want anybody to no. who the guys was that were shooting back. I bet we'll give them a percentage of the sales for all this stuff. Kevin Frimsky stole our pattern. <laughs> Well, that's a perfect story to end with. Uh, I think we gave you enough information. Um, these are just another great fly to add to your box. Again, if you like to fish worms already, keep fishing the ones that you're fishing. This is just another one to add to the repertoire. Um, works really well. Um, I fished it. I, I'm constantly asking Chuck for more of the worms because he won't give them to me. He, he'll give me this, the bug skin, but I got to tie them myself. So I'm hoping there you'll you give me some. Uh, finally. These are all the different colors that I fooled with last night. Jeez. I tied pretty fast. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I'm going to keep these. He's not getting them back. Well, Chuck, thanks for, I really appreciate you being on All here right. tying this one. Uh, if you guys have any questions for us, you can leave them down below in the comment section, or you can email me at tcamise at gmail.com. Um, as always, you can check out my website, troutandfeather.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Uh, but more importantly, if, if you have any questions or any comments related to the bug skin for Chuck, by all means, leave them down there. I will forward it to, to him. He's not on Facebook or Instagram. I'm not going to say yet because I'm not <laughs> sure if that's ever going to happen. But if you have any questions, trust me, I will get them to him. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Chuck, thank you so much for being on again. Yeah. And be on the lookout because there are other videos that I am featuring Chuck on. You're going to love them all. Really some great patterns out there.